Okay. So we pretend this one is a new workshop. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah. This is the last workshop that I prepared for you guys in this fantastic opportunity, you know, in the conference. So as a last uh, workshop, um, the topic is like distance mapping using ArcGIS JC API, which is a different, different team in the uh, uh, S3. They, developing, uh, they are developing like very you know, powerful JSC API that you guys can access for free. Yeah, uh, it's basically set up the, the, the functions which basically import them and then just use it. I mean, there's some restriction, but um, yeah, I mean, the big idea is there. So we have one of a uh, project overview. Actually, this is just some of my research and media lab that I just submitted to this conference. Um, and then we have some lecture things, uh, yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna leave a video to you guys, which I already recorded like what, uh, several months ago to use the JCK things. So actually my, this workshop is more about like a, give us some high level, um, idea or reference for the mapping, and then on the, on the technical side, so there's the other video, the two version, Korean version and English version. Probably you guys wanted to use the English version to understand how to poke my GitHub to you know make the um, your own sort of the, the TypeScript JavaScript environment to build this application. So all boilerplate is there, and then um, description is also there on YouTube. So I will leave this comment at the end of this workshop. Okay. So here, um, uh, which is uh, nothing special, but um, this is, I, I visualize in third place. Do you guys know what is third place? Third place is the place in between house and workplace. Library or bank or coffee shop, or everything become third place between two places. So I use the, the Google stream, uh, Google, Google Place API to price all the sort of place uh, area around Boston and Cambridge uh, um, city, city of Cambridge. Then I, using the network analysis, I create the, um, um, some of the algorithm to price the third sort of place based on the walkable distance. Also there's a, a different uh, way to apply the weight. And then, um, I'm also dealing with the discretized data and then continuous data and then how they merge them. You have to be in a, a uh, let's say, bent from the particular position data around their like, uh, area, you know, uh, like uh, affect the information around their area. So there's uh, several techniques uh, I, I utilized and it's nothing um, special in terms of the technical things. And then at the end of the, uh, work, I try to compare and revealing what is the result with the lens of third place. So this is the result. And then, then there's two things to interpret the result, I think. The first way is to see the number, correct, right? So because the number is all about the result for the computation, right? And the other way around is uh, looking at just shape. Actually, this is not normalized one. So for example, this is like, a, I don't know, maybe it's 100, this is maybe five or 10, because different scale. But the shape itself has a unique. So for example, the tool can help you guys to create two different places, make it one place, or you can compare one particular place based on history, yeah, with the third place um, idea. So yeah, for those who are interested in that one, so I submit a paper so you guys can download, I don't know, well, but you guys um, can download, I guess. But also there's information on my website, by the way. And then uh, we have this video, right? I think you guys already saw this video, right? Because I made this video for the advertising this workshop. Because the people in the um, conference, they asked me. So actually I used processing to create this 3D uh, GIS visualization things um, like uh, five years ago. Um, so I used some shapefile, and then also I used some sort of um, the data, um, which is free, yeah. So I'm trying to make up the map rather than tracing, trying to make a map which is uh, indicating three things. So um, yeah, I mean, this is other place things. Yeah, this is the, all about the data. 
actually, this is the, the sort of last workshop that I said to you. Yeah, using the JCK things. So, um, just quickly remind most important things in order, okay? The coordinate system, um, actually, the, uh, as I'm just, I'm thinking like uh, uh, the coordinate system is uh, all about the graphics, I guess. Even the vector, we can consider vector as a coordinate system. So coordinate systems is describe how we present or visualize entity on the screen or on the space, right? So for example, as I said, projection, right? So there's a, for example, if I um, have, um, this is the how they project, but um, if I have one point here, right? There's a multiple interpretation of a point on the map. For example, what is the screen position? Because right now we are watching the screen, right? So maybe zero, zero here, X exit, and then Y exit, it has a screen position there. And then also it has a, uh, the latitude and longitude position. And then also it has a globe. So there are three different positions we need to project and reproject to calculate. We can think about the point itself is not vector, but more about like coordinate system, correct? So here, because we are facing the mapping, the projection is really important. So this is one of my demo. Uh, I just uh, did this because uh, uh, I used the three D3 uh, library for the projection. So if you click it, okay, you know what? The red indicating my screen position. And then I'm literally ask the projection, oh, give me the latitude and longitude data out of this screen where my mouse is, is right now. And then using this latitude and longitude, and then I'm, I project and draw on the map as a green point. So here, if I double click, I can change the, uh, um, you know, um, the projection, double click, yeah, to see. I mean, based on this sort of the, the projection and the focus, you know, sometimes we can create a really bad map or wrong or full of lie, right? So, I mean, the projection is pretty important in terms of the, web, uh, the, the data visualization particularly for the mapping things here. So um, this is the example of projection. Yeah. Let me close. And also, before we actually visualize in a, a, a using the technical, also we need to literally visit uh, what, it, what we need to do. Yeah. So generalization. So uh, cartographical general, uh, generalization is a sort of a, like a, a concept of how we visualizing, like how we filter the raw data as a visual language. There's a lot of time and a lot of experimentation and a lot of principle, and um, um, let's say the, the sort of law that you need to follow. Yeah, I will describe one by one actually. When it's like a, there's a there's a concept like a selection, simplification, you know, dissolving, the smoothing. Enhancement. I mean, each keyword has a, their like a, a focus, right? We think about. We have a point, multiple point overlapping each other. We can make them smooth. Well, we can exaggerate, maybe make a bigger circle. Well, we can simplify, right? I mean, there are some concepts like that. So, if you are interested in based on this concept, just you know, uh, solve the internet with the keyword. Um, here, um, guest talk principle, which is one of the really, really famous, like the, the guy who developed this kind of um, uh, example. So, like a proximity, similarity, and cruiser. I mean, using this keyword, I highly encourage you to uh, like a Google it. There's a lot of information here. Let me do this. Actually, we can do this together. See, um, image. So this is sort of like a concept, how we deal with the visual language, what is like a best way or worst way. I mean, there's a sort of like domain they talk about this kind of things. We need to learn something from them. And Burton's visual design space is also very famous like concept or principle, principle the designer need to understand, okay? So for example, uh, 
Yeah, this Valtin's visual attribute. He's the guy. Thank you. <laughs> and Valtin's visual attribute. So this is some like a nice diagram. Yeah, very straightforward. We have a mark and point and line and area for the mapping, right? And then so we can like think about the position and the point as a position, right? Size and the gray value and texture, color, orientation, and shape. This is like a one-on-one -on -one or sometimes most important like guideline that we can uh, um, repeatedly remind while making our own visualization for mapping. Correct, right? So I mean, this is a really good guideline to keep thinking what is the best in a visual language um, while uh, against our data that we want to visualize, visualize right now. Right. So this is like talks about like a most efficient way, most uh, less efficient way. This is about like quantitative data. Yeah, position, length, slope, angle, area makes sense, right? But what if we have like ordinal data or nominal data, just like color? There's no order, correct? Right. So maybe there's a lot of experimentation and um, knowledge or um, principle, as I said. So this kind of individual, sorry. Uh, this kind of a uh, um, small concept is, is actually um, changing your fundamental or like uh, the impact of your visualization. So this is actually my experience. It's really important material. So mark, point, line, area. And as a, one of the, my research, um, I can, I mean, clustering point is uh, one of the way to, as I said, um, uh, like a filter the data, right? raw data. So think about we have a, vertices on the mesh or point data on the map, right? So the clustering is a good technique, even for the machine learning stuff, to, to draw some line between some two different things. So there's a very traditional way to make the, the uh, point cluster, like a greedy basic cluster things. But you know what, based on their purpose, we need to I think this is really important to pick the methodology. So greedy based clustering sometimes is good, but sometimes it's no good for the interaction things. So I invented like the it's a mouse, mouse full name, like collision based dynamic of method. So it allowed us to interact the point while the, the cluster the data at the same time. You can actually play with the data on the map. So this is the idea. And then the implementation is goes to the story map. So if you guys want to experience, there's an app on the internet so you can access it. So I'm just, uh, as a developer, uh, as a, like a engineer, I can tell you it's like basically, you know, build the connectivity based on the collision. So for example, we have a point, and they collide each other. And then we can think about, oh, they are one group and one group. Right, and then I based on the collision, I create the connect the graph. Yeah. However, you know, think about we have point. Yeah, a lot of point. They are like a, um, 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 how can I say? I mean, we have a point like this. Yeah, they are all collide each other. Yeah, they, then they become like one point because they simply connect each other. Yeah. So in this case. We need a more, uh, the other special sort of a process, like a recursive checking process based on our resolution right here. So that we can tussle the graph and then post the process. And then at the end of this process, and then I push this data to the renderer to draw something. Yeah, this is all the logical operation. And um, yeah, whenever you change the zoom level, and then we can we need to execute. Otherwise, it's, we, are, we are good to go because we already processed the data. So on the real time the rendering process, we what we need to do is just just draw the result, yeah, which is a more optimized way. Um, here, uh, the other sort of a concept, like a principle of graphical, you know, integrity. Yeah, I think this kind of a keyword. And examples is inside our brain, actually. You know, how we dealing with the bar chart, for example. Can you see this? The number is actually different. Yeah, yeah. Number is different, but the graphically, they look similar. So they, I mean, the press, you know, the press is they actually dealing with a lot of, um, let's say, I don't know, I don't want to say, but anyhow, the newspaper 
were some uh, the political magazine, they actually play with the bar chart or pie chart by this kind of graphical integrity, which is no good. For the um, visualization specialist, we need to be careful like a life factor, as I said, like in classio, um, the, the, we need to avoid the jump, uh, the charts jump. This is all the well-defined keyword. Yeah. So for example, um, you know, there's a link, I guess, um, the life factor here. Yeah. Again, this is well-defined area. So what we need to do is learn something from that area, right? So this is the, how we calculate the life factor. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a full of insight. Yeah. And the data ink ratio, this is also very interesting. So, you know, according to this article, I mean, the data ink ratio, obviously that one, the, the one the below is a, uh, the, the, the more straightforward and more clear way against this um, bar chart. There's a fun principle, yeah. So I think that this is a really good time, you know, even for me. Sometimes I'm trying to remember and sometimes, sometimes I uh, compare my ritual to, with this kind of the principle or um, the integrity, yeah. So this is a really good filter to uh, revisit because the data visualization is not one kind or linear process. It's more like an iterative process. Yeah? Make a some system, visualizing, and then we create the other pipeline to tweak the visualization again. And then we can, you know, basically fitting the process to revealing the result out of data. Yeah, this is all about like visualization, like iterative pr pr process. In this iterative process, we need to apply, we need to keep in mind it's this kind of a principle, which is actually, you know, small thing can change a lot. So, you know, junk chart is an article. I highly recommend you guys to visit in graphical integrate. I found a nice material. See, yeah. In this pie graph, I felt like, you know what, this, this, uh, what is this? Uh, string, string, string <laughs> is bigger than uh, collusions, but the ink ratio, it has a more, more ink. So as a visual effect, people percept, oh, that one is a little bit bigger than that, that one. But actually, the, you know what, this is the number, this one is higher than this one, but it has a three dimensional, so it has an unnecessary ink down there. So this kind of a uh, life factor where um, um, some principle is there, so we just take advantage of um, some of the like a measure system to measure our visualization. Sometimes in you know, a 3D visualization is really bad for the data, I, I think. So I think simple is always straightforward and yeah, I don't know, it depends on the data, but Again, there's a link. I encourage you guys to um, just um, read the article, and then based on the, the keyword, you can create your own self on the web, uh, Google, Google LinkedIn. And also, I give you guys uh, the other interesting, you know, sort of brainstorming page. Yeah, 45 ways to communicate two quantities. Yeah, so we have two quantities, right? 75 and 37. There's a you know, different types of representation of uh, the compelling uh, uh, two different entities here. See, we have uh, the repeated icon or human can unit, you know, decimal, bar, line graph, percentage bar, yeah, proportion, or by pie chart, yeah, and circle area, yeah. Interesting, right? You, there's a, this, this many way, you know, to just compare two different values. So I think that this kind of um, um, brainstorming is also uh, become important because sometimes if you really focus on your work, you couldn't see. Uh, so we need to, um, some place to, you know, take a look at our work, a little bit different perspective. So I sometimes visit this website and then just take a look at it. Uh, with the uh, mindfulness of my data. So, I mean, just visual, the brainstorming purpose, which is also good a reference for you guys. I recommend to visit. And this is one of the famous, uh, you know, the, the visualization, let's say, called Nightingale Morality. You know what? So, 
I mean, there's a more clear uh, useful information describing what is this. But as far as I know, this is described the war, the, the, the UK took the war against the Russia. And then there's a, actually the, the, the diagram that Nightingale did is, is revealing our insight. Previous people thought about during the war, you know, in the battle, yeah? Maybe people can die, right? Because battle, right? But if the visualization it turns out no, there's an outbreak. So the, the, the people uh, dying in the battle is very small, again, okay, compared to the people who die because of the, the outbreak disease. Yeah. So according to this, uh, after this visualization, they have some like a different, uh, you know, um, let's say policy or whatever, like a clean um, things during the world. I don't know. But keep in mind, you know, most important thing is that how we reveal the, the, the result from the data. First of all, we, we need to fully, you know, deploy our domain knowledge, right? This is the most important things. The reason Nightingale can draw this um, diagram is because Nightingale is a nurse, right? He has a full of the, the idea about the human and disease, right? So, and also we need to analysis the data, right? And then we keep tweak the analysis. Is on the right track or not? It's like an iterative process. But at the end of the visualization, at the end of the day, at the end of the, 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 your um, visualization work, we need to speak with the data because you know we are dealing with data, yeah. And also we we, we need to talk uh, visualizing with the insight. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know, this is sort of my last word to you guys in terms of um, uh, the visualization in the lecture series. And then for the workshop, um, here, this is the homework, I guess, yeah. Um, this is a 3JS uh, the experimentation. I give you guys the boilerplate code here. And then, I don't know, uh, in the class of a Python, workshop at that time, I uh, created the ice cake, you know, data visualization on the globe. So this is the projection, spherical projection, and then the, the loops things. So this is Python done by. And then I, I challenge you guys that, um, let's say port Python code to the TypeScript and then create the geometry, yeah, and then dump this mesh to the scene to create some glove things here. This is an assignment. Um, and then, you know what, for the mapping, um, the remap is really important, to be honest. So what, does, what it does is basically, just think about it. Huh? We have a 1,200, for example. But you know the screen size is uh, let's say the 400 pixel and 400 pixel. We, we need to like, remap. It's like a different type of projection. So for example, we have this this many number. It has a minimum and maximum, correct. And also we have a screen minimum and maximum, correct. So we need to resize, reproject the data scale to the screen scale because we're gonna draw something on the screen, right? So here. Using the remap, I just put the, the remap function here so you guys can use it. So here, I'm just commenting, commenting out. I simply remap the data. Then now you can see the correct scale, like a proportional scale, yeah. Obviously, you know, the first data is not like 1,200 pixel, it's not. However, this is their own like a bar scale. I mean, if you guys are familiar with the, uh, the, the D3 or N chart, they already provide like some the axis. So we will visit later, but uh, my point I want to make in this uh, exercise is that we have a linear, this different types of projection. Let's say we can consider it as a projection actually, because it's all about like translating the number, okay? So um, if, if I change like one more zero here, yeah, yeah. So we can get like an entire like a picture of the data, yeah. So this is a remap. We can also consider the production things. And then uh, we have a scalar plot here. 
Yeah, the same concept. But bar chart only we need to take care of uh, the, um, the the height, right? The bar chart usually you can we can visualizing at least four dimension, right? X dimension, Y dimension, and then uh, the circle size, right? And then color, right? You can put like a more dimension. You can visualize in multiple dimension throughout the simple 2D scalar plot. Correct. So here, I created boilerplate code, same data, and then I just literally visualize. Yeah. Some of the point, some of the point is out of the canvas, uh, all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, right? So we need to remap, right? So this is the the result. The remap. Really? It was working? Okay, correct. Yeah, now they scale entirely, right? Holistic way. So now we can see the relationship between points correctly in a one scale, right? And then, uh, no, no, but, but by the way, the most important thing you need to remind is that people, I mean, particularly for the designer, they, they used to use uh, the coordinate system from here, zero, zero. Right, but keep in mind the canvas graphics, particularly the um, the web graphics, they consider these points become zero zero. So along the x-axis and y-axis. Here, what I what I did is uh, I basically convert like a reverse the y-axis. Yeah. So this is the function. So not function. This is sort of a simple math. So I apply the offset because I don't want to put this point all the, the on the edge. So I apply like a 20 pixel, let's say maybe I can apply 10 pixel, a little offset, yeah, and then I fit. We have a little margin, yeah, a little space, so the, which you know, looks better, right? And then uh, this is, we have a hot, the hot canvas from that point, and then we can reversely print the dot along the y-axis. So this is the, just simple equation, otherwise, Otherwise, the data is just upside down because take a look at the screen. So this is a y axis. It's like an upside down. So we are, human being is not familiar with this kind of this coordinate system. So that's why I put uh, this comment. Yeah. So I reverse the y, um, the you know, axis things. Um, so collision detection. So um, I mean, collision detection is. I think um, as I said. Um, this low level sort of API uh, is, uh, can be used in multiple ways, like a game or, or mapping or agent based design. Or we can actually uh, replace the, 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 let's say, we have a two box and then we can check whether they collide each other or not, right? We can replace this box, not rather than, uh, rather than box, we can replace with some other data set. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of freedom. So, so for example, uh, there's a, some technical document, documentation, uh, MDN here. So there's a, some you know, idea toward exit aligned bounding box, which is very light and fast uh, algorithm to check whether they are overlapping or not. So um, yeah, I mean, I copy this file. And then I migrate this code to the class implementation here. So I create, create the canvas select class as we learned yesterday. No, day before, uh, the day before yesterday, because it was trying to pretend, you know. Um, so I implement the class here, x and y and with height. And then it has a function, it's collide. Right, and it has a function to render, correct. And for the uh, implementation of the class, I mean the object, and then I create two different rectangles here, right, with this parameter. Yeah, and then I'm 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 check check the co uh, collision between two objects. So if they check in in in, in terms of the render, if they check uh, they collide each other, and then they become lag. Otherwise, they become green here. Yeah, they become green. Yeah. And then the one thing I wanted to mention to you guys is 
for example, uh, see. Come on. So I print two rectangles here. So I'm trying to inspect, okay, is there a collide? No, force, right? Obviously, they're not collide because there's space between them, right? But what happens if I make them collide each other? Yeah, they become lag, right? And then according to the algorithm here, I design, if they collide each other, and then they remember who overlapping on top of me, who hover over me, right? So for example, I print these two rectangle, and then is it collide with others? It's true. So other has a, the other rectangle. Yeah, the other rectangle. And then they point each other. Okay, let's say I'm the, uh, this big rectangle is me, and then maybe this is small rectangle, we collide. And then this inside of the, uh, it has their own variable, called uh, others here, other. And the inside of the variable, they have a point to indicate me. And also I have a, uh, I'm trying to describe some graph system. Yeah, they collide each other and then trying to remember who trigger me to be collide. Yeah, so this is the, actually using the functional programming, other things is really hard to uh, make this kind of environment. But using class fashion, it's really easy, just one line of magic. Yeah, just like this, this, and then I just wanna append it. And then another, I wanna add myself to that variable. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the implementation. You guys can see it. And yeah, so I, I, can, I can revisit here. Yeah. Um, Okay, let me think a little bit. Yeah, and then I'm also uh, gonna introduce other library that you can um, take advantage of. Because sometimes the low level is a little bit tough to start, right? So we have here mchart. mchart is, let me close the, the other window a little bit, okay? Bye, bye, bye. Okay. Yeah, mchart is like, a, let's say, I mean, the, the term is wrong on the like high level, lower level, because it's a little bit different things, but let's say we can just use for, for um, convenience, just this is like a little high level library things. So um, here, if you go to this basic, uh, I also provide uh, the boilerplate code to you guys, like a, uh, Core map, we need to import in the correct way. The reason I'm doing this is because the documentation, according to the documentation, I need to do this. Otherwise, I couldn't use it. And once I import, I import the JSON using the jQuery. And then this is all about the visualization here. So I create a chart, append this div, HTML here. And then we need to create a projection, yeah? The middle of projection here. And then we have the GeoJSON data here to draw the world map here, okay? And then, uh, I mean, this is sort of the syntax, just like a 3JS. In order to create a mesh, we need to cook geometry material first, right? And then we need to push this to, to, to material to the mesh object. This is a, how we cook the, how we generate the mesh in 3JS, right? But in, in the M chart, there's a, some rules. We need to create the polygon series, just like this. And, and also we can append some event, yeah? Once I, I think it's click, yeah? Once I click, I can populate a point here, right? Point, point, point. This is the, all about the, um, the mass in action. So if I click it, and then it parses the, the, let's say, SVG point, I feel like screen position. And then inside of the chart, 
there's some special uh, projection things happening, and then basically they convert and then save the data for the latitude and longitude. And then with this uh, variable, we can create the marker. Yeah, I think this is my interpretation of the lines here. So just play with it. This is, I think the data is about the airports, I think. Yeah, I just found something here. Um, airport data, yeah. National code, I guess, and latitude, longitude, and name, names of the airport, and city, and state, yeah. There's a lot of data. So meaning that you can make a, even same data, you can visualize a little bit different representation. Yeah. And then this is the other example, the M chart. Uh, yeah, this is a Mercurial projection, all right? And then you can comment out, and then we can make an orthographic projection. Yeah. And then, so we have the other projection, equal earth projection. Yeah, I think the, the, the area gonna be uh, preserved, but angle gonna be like you know, different. Miller projection. Yeah, even, you know, the other library for the mapping out there, they also have a very similar concept, right? They have a projection, right? They have a base map, right? So we can visualize some graphic or marker on top of it. The, the, the base map, meaning that we need a projection, right? I mean, these are like a very, well, as long as you understand and familiar with the, um, this kind of pipeline and the mental structure of the mapping or application, then we can predict, yeah. Not only predict, we can actually, uh, very easy to learn something new because they're gonna follow the, the principle, anyhow. Uh, is, there, is, is there a reason why you're not using D3? D3? For this? No. Oh, sorry. My shit. <laughs> Stupid shit. Um, it is an M chart. It's not a D3. Right. Yeah. But, but do I'm, you I'm just gonna... have a preference? or? or yeah, yeah I have a reference. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to introduce D3 to you guys. Because this is very popular and a little low level compared to the M chart. Meaning that there should be many ways to tweak them, but still, it, there's a high level uh, library. So in, in the canvas, you know, actually we can create a more dynamic visualization um, compared to the D3 actually. Yeah. So yeah, there's always just debate when, when you look at graphic, vector graphics libraries for mapping, especially there's always debate as to what you should use. And I mean, I'm, I'm sort of like, I use D3 yeah. just because like that's the default, but I always wonder why people use other libraries for mapping. Yeah, I mean, if I understand correctly in the context, I totally agree with your, um, your saying. I mean, I'm not pushing you guys like a, because there's a good library, right? So why, do, why don't we just use it, take advantage of it? I mean, this is more about like a, the purpose of um, um, the individual people, I, I think. Because my job is to create something um, from scratch without limitation things. But even the D3, I have a lot of experience. I have a different types of projects using D3 previously. But still, D3 has a limitation because this is generic plugin, meaning that it cannot cover all the corner cases or edge cases. It's almost impossible, right? So, I mean, but for the designer, I'm actually, I'm, I'm very encouraged to learn the D3 because there's a lot of examples, a lot of like, um, you know, problem troubleshooting things. So meaning that we can just take advantage of it because we are focusing on the, we are, um, which allow us to focus on the visualization itself rather than tweaking some low level coding things, right? So my, I mean, yeah, this is a little, yeah, I mean, obviously this is, there's uh, discussions. Um, it depends on the people, I think, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I don't want like just um, um, describe how we use the D3. I just wanted to give you guys more fundamental idea to insight to your brain. But keep in mind, as long as you, you know, trying to understand this class concept, data processing, and then I think that the, this kind of the learning process is even helpful to take advantage of this because the algorithm behind the scenes is basically identical, this mess, yeah. 
So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. This is my opinion. Yeah. I probably no, wrong. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I might be wrong, but um, yeah, I mean, but somebody asked me to visualize it very quickly. I probably use this way because this way is itself enough. It's like a very powerful and then faster. But this is uh, SVG. Uh, there's canvas, but mainly SVG. SVG is a little bit different, uh, uh, like a, let's say, different characteristic against the canvas or vector graphics. Um, when I say vector, it's not like vector, vector, deep net like vector graphics. Yeah. 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 Um, thank you for asking this question because I think this is good to discuss. You know. um, yeah, I mean, the, but M chart is a more, I feel like, more high level because it's already cooked. What we need is just inject based on their API, yeah. And then now, yeah, I'm very happy to reach D3. I was a big fan, you know, for D3 uh, because it has a lot of um, examples here. I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are familiar with D3 because you guys my workshop, yeah? Meaning that you guys are interested in mapping or visualization. So yeah, D3. Everyone knows this way, and this is very powerful. But um, whenever you use this way, I encourage you guys not just use function or just dump the data to the map, but just think what's happening inside of the function and how the function treats the data. Yeah? Actually, you can create your own special class to dealing with the, the, the D3 functions rather than just rely on the D3 functions. Correct. So um, again, just a lot of people use this way, meaning that there's a lot of examples we can take advantage. So I highly recommend visit. And then even, you know what, even just by looking at the individual visualization, we can get a lot of insight in terms of the, the way of visualization, right? And then the technique or some um, you know, visual uh, representation things because they are specialist person. They developed this library for a long time. Uh, as, far as, I, as far as I know, the guys are, uh, Graduate Stanford, this is some of like their his uh, work, and then he go to some newspaper company. I couldn't remember. I just heard that, but I don't know. I, I think this is not important. But the most important thing is that the person who developed this way is a specialized guy. So we can actually yeah, take advantage of this um, sort of um, you know, well mount um, library. So um, now I am reaching the three and uh, the, uh, the JS API, which is a little little low level than against the D3. Yeah. So I create the video here. This is English version. Uh, but at the time I was a little bit nervous, so I don't know whether I'm correctly describe or not. But at least we have a video here. So um, this talks about. Uh, how we in the POC, let's say, um, there's a my GitHub link, so you can just copy the file, and then install the. I use the, the GitHub desktop, yeah. So for example, here, like um, where's my okay here, the cute cat. So here's mapping and visualization. Uh, 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 and then using the GitHub desktop, I, I appended the link on the, 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 the medium, so you can just download it. And then open this, uh, uh, my, uh, the um, send box that can, you can download from the website. Actually, I poked from the one of the SV guy who developed and then who make it public. And then I just took it and then make it just some, some, some um, I apply some basic pipeline for the designer like you guys. So there's a, some instruction in the video, but I'm just quickly describe. Yeah. So once you, uh, let's say, download the desktop, desktop and open Visual Studio Code with the, from the desktop, and then probably you can do like an NPM, right? NPM install. Usually what I did is a YAM. YAN is like a similar thing as an NPM, Node Package Management. And then I, you need to do YAN dev or YAN start. So according to the package JSON, so here's a script, YAN start or YAN dev is basically the same. And then you can just press enter. And then they just keep processing something. 
and then it automatically trigger one uh, uh, the uh, 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 com local host yeah and then the zoom uh, it focus on the United States particular gym level with the visualization with the deep code which is oscillating. Yeah, I think that this is the same. I can, I can never be. Yeah, so I use the I basically set up the dark mode. I mean the dark base map here, and then the zip. Yeah, I mean whenever you click, actually you can populate because I just um, created the boilerplate code you can play with. This is zip code, you can see it, you can change the zoom or pan and automatically project and reproject to update the screen position, yeah. So, here, um, this is the index here, right? This is the entry point. Whenever you build this app, this TypeScript is gonna execute this one, yeah. And then here is the app. And then I create the NBiz Canvas sandbox, which is like a very root. Think about the graph that I show you guys, right? It's a the root and then model, view, controller, right? So we have a uh, we have a here the event in action, and then the render, right? And then projection. This is a, like a necessary like a. I'm trying to separate the concern, right? And then, then, and then uh, the core library, we have uh, the ArcGIS um, API things. Uh, how can I zoom in? Okay, correct. Yeah, so in the core library, core means like the core has basically uh, contained like an important process. For example, like the receiving event from the map view, JS API. This is, the, this is that. So we have the, Whenever to extend the change, whenever the stationary change, this is Tom, you can see the JS API, the, the documentation things. Whenever to resize the, uh, the canvas, it fire the events. And then the event is actually goes to the, the, the other things anyhow. And then we have a canvas, right? Yeah, in the code pen, we have a, like a small line of a canvas, but this is a more organized way. We have a canvas, uh, the class I designed. And then inside of the canvas, it has a start and draw, clear, render, resize. I just declare some boilerplate code to you guys. So you guys can tweak this code whenever you, you want, okay? And also we have an event in action, right? Like a mouse click, mouse up, this kind of things. Since we rely on the JS API base map, so we need to append our event, basically bind the function with the JS APIs, the, the, the inbuilt function. This is what I did, right? So we have a mass data here, down, move, up, things like that. And then we can basically pre process the, the, the inaction data and then push to somewhere. Yeah. And we have a projection, right? Projection is really important. And a little bit crazy, I think. Anyhow, this is to map, right? To map means we have screen position. I wanna get the geographical position, like latitude, longitude. Yeah, so in this case, you can use this to map function to screen. In this case, we have a longitude and latitude. However, we wanna get the you know screen position, right? So we just give the latitude, longitude, and then give the screen position. And then on the render, we can actually use the screen position to render because we basically draw on the screen, not on the map, right? So these are the functions that I built. Um, and then we have a US zip data, just just list of list, two, two dimensional array, nothing special. Longitude, longitude, and elevation, X, Y, Z, correct. Then we have a renderer here. As I said, we have a basic geometry. The basic geometry has a vector as it is a hover. This is basically like a very default value. And then all the geometry inherent from the geometry base, they're gonna have same you know, properties. Yeah, we basically give us like some boilerplate code. We have a vector here, right? So D copy, dot, these are all the vector necessary function. I already built it. So feel free to tweak the normalize and length, any other function here. 
So I'm, I'm gonna give you guys, yeah, to public. And then we have an index. I'm creating some namespace. And then we have a point, right? But here, we have just point class. So you guys can draw or develop like a line class. Or uh, I'm NJ, so they try to put the end point, but maybe Kyle, you can develop K point, right? Yeah, Kyle? Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe K line, K polygon, you can keep tweaking and keep developing whenever you have a new project, yeah, which is really fun. Also, we have a two different renderer because uh, based on the renderer, I have some different types of examples. So here, um, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to talk about deeply because there's a video, so it's a little bit deflicated things. So I just want to save our time. So, oops. Um, yeah, this is the link, and then it is a GitHub desktop link and then you can download node.js from this link and then visual studio code link is here um this is and then this is my github obviously you can download from here and also i can share one of the, the code pen this is the js api but not typescript but in javascript examples so you can come down a little bit here yeah so these are some spaces that you can tweak here I'm just share, yeah. I don't know for those who probably want, or uh, in the future, we might want, right? So, yeah, these are pretty much about it. And it's time to talk about final project. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. I'm not pushing you guys to submit the final projects. But um, this is a really good opportunity, right? Because, uh, Today, I talked with uh, somebody in the conference. They're trying to uh, exhibit our world in the VR environment on the web. Yeah. So I challenge you guys, like, if you guys are interested, pick one or two data set in any location on the globe. Yeah. Maybe you guys can make a team if, if, if possible. Yeah. And then as, the, as a result, we can create a image or video you can record your voice, whatever result, yeah? So the minimum is just the image, or video, or a link, yeah? And the most important thing is that we wanna, we need your, the, 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 the JSON file, which is visualized as a result, because the JSON file, we're gonna inject to our exhibition, yeah? The VR things. So I don't know what's going on behind the scene, but, um, they have a plan, but always, you know, things change. But so I really ask you guys, like, uh, if you guys are interested in uh, exhibit your work for the conference in the VR environment, again, please give me the JSON file. Otherwise, just give me image or video, okay? Then I'm gonna compile as a sum of like our result, and then I'm gonna, um, you know, um, uh, send to you guys. Yeah. So which is good opportunity, I guess. Is there any question related to the final project? Uh, if we have any issues, uh, we can email you. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, this is my email, yeah. This is my okay. email, yeah. Feel free to email me. But these days I'm very overwhelmed. Uh, because, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm very happy actually, because particularly you guys interested in something that I'm really into, yeah. So, you know, in this case, you guys spend your hours, maybe I, I count the hours, almost 10 hours, yeah? So I'm very appreciate your, your time to investigate on my, you know, or spend on my workshop. So I'm happy to discuss and then facilitating the final project, yeah? And then this is a little, uh, the material that I can share with you guys. I mean, um, this, this is my website called NJ Studio. I have been on this um, small studio since 2004. When I was in university, I started starting my company as a startup and I keep obtaining. <laughs> yeah. um, and then also I have some lab things. I don't know whether you are interested or not. But there's just some example that we have been shown here, right? 
and just you can skip it. Uh, but most important things that I have uh, the, the, the where are you? yeah, this is the feature works world here. Yeah, so I put the all the YouTube video here. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm gonna I really wanted to put our final result here. Yeah, this is English version and Korean version. So um, whenever you want, just revisit and then comment. If there's something wrong, please let me know. I wanna fix, yeah. And also there's other things happening in most of the Korean side because you know, there's a lot of material in English, right? But the Korean people has limited information. So one of my job, I guess, sort of vocation, let's say, is to help them, you know? So, so that's why most of the, the, the material, my YouTube is uh, the Korean version. However, I really encourage you guys to visit this playlist, correct? So there's a Python mapping, yeah? Using JS API, there are three different types of video, actually, you can, you can see, but it's Korean version, I guess. And then we also have uh, the Python basic, uh, the line of Python, yeah. In this tutorial, I'm talking about like the tech advantages of line of API rather than creating something from scratch. And also we have uh, some, uh, keep in mind, this is Korean version, for sorry, but later I'm definitely, if you guys need, I'm definitely wanted to create the English version for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but there's uh, some code, you know, code is always English, yeah? So you guys, you can see it. Otherwise you can try to, you know, turn on the title, subtitle, yeah? So there are some there are example like how to create the C sharp library things, and then also data processing using the um, let's say the Jupyter notebook things, and then this is the basic Python line of Python thing, and we are eventually reach um, um, this C sharp. For those who are interested in learning C sharp line of C sharp in this case, there's a long video I talk about point line data and polygon data and point cloud surface all the way down here. Other examples. I actually started recording this exact identical version as an English because somebody won't, but I have not enough time to um, push myself. So probably later I can definitely uh, want to you know, translate and make an English version of the C sharp um, scripting in Rhino, that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Any other question? When is, uh, when is our assignment or when is our project due? I mean, the, the project, I, I mean, sort of uh, the final project for you guys. Yeah. I mean, there is, a, there is no rule. Yeah, it depends on you. So that's why I ask you guys like, pick any other interesting data. Yeah, like one or two data. And then just take advantage of any, any other example I took in this uh, workshop series. Yeah, you, do, you don't need to use the, the, the ArcGIS JS API. Maybe for those who are familiar with the Grasshopper, but they can also can use the Grasshopper plugin that I provide with. So yeah, there's no rule. If you guys have any data to visualize for school project or real world project or something interesting driven, whatever, yeah, there's no rule. When is it? When is it deal? When? When? Yeah, the this is a good question. Actually, I think it's good to have, right? Because, but you know, um, let's say, according to the person, they wanted to set up the environment in following weeks. But I don't know what's going on, what's going to happen. But so I feel like, what if we have the deadline um, after this weekend? Okay. Yeah. yeah so Monday. we have a long weekend, at least the United States. I mean, yeah, the independent day. So. <laughs> so if there's no question, I really want to ask one favor to you guys, if it's possible. I. You know, as I said, some of my friends are learning their own workshop. I'm really jealous because they have a picture of all the people in that workshop. But I have, I have no picture because you guys turn off your camera. Yeah? I'm just encouraging you guys, you guys turn on your guys' camera and then shake your hand. And then we can take a some picture. And then I'm going to release this picture on the, uh, YouTube or let's say Facebook, right? 
Come on, come on, guys. Come on, face. Yeah? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I'm recording the video. Yeah? We are, we are, we are, at least we are like on the same page. Yeah? We are interested in one particular topic. That's why we are here, right? Come on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you five seconds and then, and then, okay, and then, okay, yeah. And then we're gonna shake our hand, okay? Say hello, yeah? Five, four, three, please turn on your camera. Two, one, hey, bye. 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 It was really, it was really good, you know, to see you. Uh, I really appreciate your time. And hopefully we are able to see you later. Bye, bye. I'm gonna take up this picture. Picture, bye. Bye.